بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وكل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Subhanallah, every time I would hear a khutbah or a lecture from my father about a different topic, I would hear it and I would say, Subhanallah, this must be the most important thing in Islam. Because of the emphasis, Subhanallah, how many beautiful parts of Islam are there, that the emphasis, once you see the importance of each one and the beauty of each one, that you would say, oh, this must be all of Islam. And a lot of these parts are emphasized in today's society and a lot of them are forgotten. And one of them that we are missing out on understanding and knowing is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of us are familiar with the word but we're unfamiliar with its place in Islam or how to do it or the benefits of it. We know that in certain parts of the world, because of due to, uh, due to vitamin deficiencies, children start going blind. And they don't know why they're going blind except that they slowly start to lose their eyesight. And simply for a few pennies, the solution is right around the corner. And just with that vitamin that they are lacking, they stop losing their eyesight. They don't know what they're missing out on, but it's something really, really important. Dhikr is like these vitamins. Each one of them contains such a massive and great benefit that missing out on it is like the example of that child that is going blind. This is not an overemphasis. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, the example of the one who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember his Lord, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ Like the example of the living and the dead. There is no comparison between the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not. And the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is peace, tranquility and success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innu al qulub. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find rest, peace, contentment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do dhikr. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhikrullah. O you who believe, do dhikr of Allah. Is that it? Dhikran kathira, plentiful dhikr. اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا and make and glorify him in the mornings and in the evenings there are special dhikrs that we will speak about later which are done in the morning and the evening that are like these vitamins that we have spoken about then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a verse that a lot of people read but few people know what it is in reference to. Out of all the dhikr, Allah tells us the benefit of one particular dhikr. After commanding us to do dhikr. Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا Imagine being lost in the middle of the woods and it's raining and it's dark and there are clouds up ahead and the trees are overgrown and there are multiple layers between a person and the sky Allah gives an, another example of darkness in the Quran Allah says uh, uh, Allah says فِي بَحْرٍ لُجِينٍ يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِّن فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِّن فَوْقِهِ سَحَابٌ ظُلُمَاتٌ بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدِرَهَا Like in the darkness of the night, in the middle of the sea with waves on top of waves crashing above. 
These are the people who are in a state of darkness. This is in the absence of light, there is darkness. Without connecting ourselves to the light, there is darkness. Without remembering Allah, there is darkness. This is the example of that darkness. But Allah says, He is the one who sends salawat upon you. And the salah from Allah has many meanings. Mercy, honor, elevation. Now, one of those meanings is mentioned that encompasses all of them. He is the one who removes you from all those darknesses. Allah didn't say from a zulami ila nur, from the darkness into the light. No, from the darknesses. People have anxiety and worries and bills and problems and tribulations and addictions and sins. So many darknesses that are keeping us away from the light. Allah says He is the one who sends His salawat upon us so that He may remove us from the darknesses into the light. And He is with the believers merciful. Their greeting they receive when they see Him is salam. Allah will say salam to the believers. What, what is the story of this verse? The removal from darkness into light. This is after Allah commanded one of the adhkar. As I mentioned, they're like vitamins. Each one of them is essential for a particular thing. And the one that Allah says He removes you from the darkness into the light is the salah on the Prophet the Prophet said, Man salla alayya salatan sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever sends one salawat upon me, what did we say it means? Mercy, honor, elevation. Allah said in this verse that it means removal from darknesses into light. You send one salawat unto the Prophet and Allah has sent him as the light. Allah sends salawat upon him in the Quran. What does he need your salawat for? What happens? You receive 10 salawat in return. And the scholars have said that one of those salawat is enough to take care of your problems in this world and the next. And the other nine are a bonus because Allah is generous and gives more and more and more. And the Prophet ﷺ is the, the pinnacle of creation. But Allah can always give more. Allah can always give more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu wadhkuru Allah dhikran kathira. Allah commands us to make a lot of dhikr. Not just dhikr. Allah said al dhikr, a lot of dhikr. Dhikran kathira. Specifically mentioning him and glorifying him in the morning and the evening. There are special adhkar that are done every morning and every evening. That one should sit down after the Fajr prayer and after the Maghrib prayer. Or in another opinion, after the Fajr and after the Asr prayer. And they do these adhkar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes them from darknesses into the light and blesses them with such help. And we'll see some of the virtues of those dhikrs. One way that we can understand in general the virtue of dhikr, Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, I will remember you. Now anybody, even the child here, if you ask a child, does Allah forget? They would say, no, Allah never forgets. So what does it mean, adhkurkum? You mention, what does it mean, I will remember you? You mention Allah and you remember Him as the protector. What do you think Allah will do to you? Anybody? Protect you, correct. You mention Allah as the one who takes care of needs. What will Allah do? Take care of your needs. You will see that in the most special of adhkar and the most special of the adhkar and the duas of the prophets, there is no actual part of the dhikr where you're asking for something. And that's the key. There is no part of it where you're asking for something. You are mentioning the greatness of Allah and mentioning one of Allah's attributes. You're mentioning Him as the protector. بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا يَضُرُّ مَعَ اسْمِهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ In the name of Allah, that 
in whose name no one is harmed in the heavens or the earth and he is the all hearing and the all knowing did you ask Allah for anything in this dhikr did you yes or no no you mentioned Allah in the name of Allah you're starting your day you're starting your evening in the name of Allah through whose name no one is harmed in the heavens or the earth and he is the all hearing and the all knowing there is a Arabic poetry that is, is something that is recited was recited to the kings that it was sufficient for me to mention your greatness for me not to even have to ask you to help me that as soon as I mention your greatness you are so grand that you would help me without even me having to say help me when you mention Allah as the helper as the protector the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who says this, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, through whose name no one is harmed in the heavens or the earth, and he is the all-hearing and the all-knowing. لا يضره شيء. Nothing will harm this person for that day. And then he reads it in the evening, nothing will harm him for that night. This is one of the adhkar. Another one of the adhkar, the dhikrs that is important to learn, Another one is just leaving our matter to Allah. It is important to know these and to know their meaning. What are you saying? You're speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're remembering Allah. Allah has promised to remember you. You remember Allah is the protector and the one that we said, Allah gives you his protection. In this one, you say, Allah is enough for me. Allah is sufficient for me. I don't need anyone but Allah meaning. There is no God but Him, meaning He's the one in charge, He's the one in control, and He is the master, He's the only one that I have to worry about, He's the only one that I have to try to please, He's the one who is enough for me, no one is in control except Him. Sufficient for me is Allah. There is no God worthy of worship but Him. On Him I place my complete trust and reliance, and He is the Lord of the great throne. So you're saying Allah is enough for me to take care of everything for me. He is after all the Lord of the great throne. There is no God but Him. What do you think Allah will do? Take care of you. The Prophet ﷺ, it was mentioned that the one who mentioned, who says this seven times in the morning and the evening, كَفَاهُ اللَّهُ هَمَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Allah takes care of His worries in this world and the hereafter. So you see a pattern. You remember Allah, Allah remembers you with His protection. It doesn't mean that Allah forgot you, it means that Allah will grant you His help. You remembered Allah is the protector, Do you think Allah is too great not to grant you His protection after you remember Him as His protector. This is the meaning of the verse. وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ Allah commanded the prayer, to establish the prayer and Allah says and the remembrance of Allah is greater how is there if somebody says I'm not gonna pray Asr prayer I'm just gonna sit and do dhikr is this right no absolutely not the prayer in itself is dhikr and it contains one of the most important adhkar and dua which is Surah Al-Fatiha which if you did not perfect your Surah Al-Fatiha don't worry about learning any other dhikr mashallah listen to the beautiful recitation of the in the Salah today clear crisp not going up and down and beautiful recitation alhamdulillah you have alhamdulillah an incredible teachers at your disposal the one who didn't doesn't correct their fatiha has what is their excuse seek go ask try to correct one brother he uh, uh, he told me he or he refused to enter my class at uh, one time he was just uh, sitting around he was a kid he said, I, I read the Qur'an five times. <laughs> I said, I showed him subhanAllah, I told him recite the Fatiha. He could not properly recite it. I said, you haven't read the, the Fatiha once. I helped him with one part of the Fatiha, one letter he couldn't pronounce. Ah. He was saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I told him, no, you have to focus on the Ayn. Ah, ah, ah. Alternate between them so you know the difference. They're not the same letter. You have to say the Ayn, then, the, then let go and go to the A. Ah. This simple exercise. In 15 seconds, I gave him the instruction. And within like 30 seconds, he had said it right. And then he sat and practiced and fixed a, a verse in his Surah Al-Fatiha. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of an intention and, and going... And, and trying to, to improve. 
So if you haven't tried to correct your Fatiha, don't worry about doing all these adhkar and so on. Go in and correct your Fatiha. This is a, the, the, it is called two things, the Fatiha. By the way, when the Quran, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidun, the Quran is referred to as a dhikr. Because it is such, there's no dhikr without the Quran then. The Quran is referred to as, uh, the Fatiha is referred to as the Quran. And the Fatiha is referred وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ The سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ There's a difference of opinion and some have said that they are the verses of the Fatiha وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ is also the Fatiha because it is such a vital part of the Fatiha the Fatiha is such a vital part of the Quran that it is referred to as the whole Quran. And then also what is the Fatiha referred to as قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نصفين. That I have divided the prayer between me and my servant in two halves. And if he said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I say, My servant has praised me. And if he says, Al Rahman Al Rahim, I say. And if he says, Malik Yawmideen, I say. It's a conversation. So the Fatiha is part of it, is Al Quran Al Azim. Al Quran is referred to as Al Dhikr. So the Fatiha is, especially if you want to learn your dhikr, start with what is fard. Then go to what is sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ didn't cheat us and lie to us and just give us uh, things in a wrong order. Learn your requirement first, then move beyond that. But then going back to dhikr in itself. We said, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ The remembrance of Allah is greater. The remembrance of Allah is greater, and this is after the prayer was mentioned. The remembrance of Allah to, doesn't mean sitting down and making dhikr is better than praying your prayer, your fard prayer especially, no. This means that the remembrance, you when you remember Allah, Allah said, I will remember you. And the fact that Allah will remember you because you remembered Allah, your remembrance of Allah is insignificant compared to the fact that Allah will remember you. Allah's remembrance is greater, meaning the fact that Allah will remember you is greater. You just said, Hasbi Allah la ilaha illa hu alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul al azim. You have said, Sufficient for me is Allah. There is no God but Him. On Him I place my trust and reliance, and He is the Lord of the Great Throne. What do you think is befitting of the Lord of the Great Throne to do? His remembrance of you will be greater. He will bend the rules of the universe to, to take care of your worries and your needs. He will uh, arrange your affairs in a way that is, can only come from Him. One dhikr. Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illa hu alayhi tawakkalt. Allah says, I will remember you. Allah says, the remembrance of Allah is greater. Allah says, make plentiful dhikr. How much time a day do we spend making dhikr? Starting with myself, even the time that we spend inside of our salah, how much the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going on. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَهُوَ خَادِعُهُمْ وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا This sounds more like us. The hypocrites, they are attempt to deceive Allah while they are the ones who are being deceived. And if they rise to the prayer, they rise lazily looking at the people who's watching me and they remember Allah only a little that sounds more like our prayer if we are being honest forget about the dhikr outside of the prayer even the salah itself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, to keep the prayer guard the prayer and the middle prayer there is a couple of famous opinions what the middle prayer is anybody can name one what is the middle prayer asr what is the other opinion Fajr, somebody said Fajr, yes. So if you start at Dhuhr, Asr, then Maghrib is in the middle. And if you start at Maghrib and Isha, because the day, our Islamic day begins at Maghrib. So Maghrib, Isha, Fajr. So those are the two popular opinions. There's another opinion that I, I like, and sometimes the verse can mean all of those things. And it does mean all of those things. All of those things are true. 
the middle prayer was said to be the time between the prayers where you're not actually in salah where now you just have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have salah from sila from connection to Allah keep your connection to Allah even between the prayers even in the middle prayer as in in the salah in the connection with Allah in between the prayers keep your prayers and in between the prayers keep your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he used to do such dhikr of Allah outside of the prayer, outside of the time of the morning and the evening, that when he would enter the bathroom, he would have to put a rock in his mouth to keep his tongue from making the dhikr automatically. He had the attributes of one of the people of the people of Jannah on this earth. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, one of the things in Jannah is that yulhamuna dhikr, yulhamuna tasbih, kama yulhamuna nafas, aw kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that they will be gifted the dhikr of Allah and the tasbih of Allah in Jannah, the people of Jannah, may Allah make us among the people of the Firdaus. They will be gifted the blessing of always making dhikr automatically, just like you breathe automatically. So this is a description of the people of Jannah in Jannah. Not a description of the people of Jannah, not just a description of the people of Jannah on earth, Allah says, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ And those who mention Allah plentifully, and the males and the females. أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward. Part of that great reward is that Allah will give them as a gift the ability to remember Him. Without even consciously, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, just they'll be gifted with the dhikr just like we breathe without even having to put in effort for it I don't know of many descriptions of the people of Jannah in Jannah that are also descriptions of the people of Jannah on this earth the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something tremendous right? it, is a, it is a commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have forgotten about and no surprise because the dhikr, where does it come? What is its place in the deen? Is it one of the five pillars? We are coming short in our five pillars. We view a, a religious person as a one who prays. Not the one who establishes the prayer, who has learned and finished completing his fard ayn and has learned his proper aqidah and has purified and when he makes wudu, he ma takes care to make the wudu properly and to cover everything. No, just because this person comes to the masjid and is seen around the masjid and he prays. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُمْ Woe to those. Wail means woe, warning. For the ones who, who, for who? For the ones who abandon the prayer, for the murderers. Wail is a name of a special valley in hellfire. Reserved for who? The ones who, uh, you know, uh, uh, assault others. Who, who is this for? Allah says for the ones who pray. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who are heedless towards their prayer. They don't care the time is coming in, the time is going. I'm going to pray, I prayed, I prayed. It doesn't matter how my prayer is, how my wudu is, what I'm thinking of after the prayer, in the prayer, before the prayer. And what I'm thinking of is actually other people. If people are watching me, my prayer is good. If people aren't watching me, my prayer is not good. Allah says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ Those who, the first description after that is that they show off. And they're looking, who's watching me? This is remembering the khalq. Everything in our society tells us to remember the khalq. I studied, I studied communication, one of uh, the, my majors in UC Davis. Um, and we are surrounded by, I don't need to study communication to tell you, and you already know we're surrounded by these messages all around us that are trying to make us do dhikr of the dunya. And you need to have this, and you want to have this, and look what thing, new thing you can buy, and look what's missing from your house, and look what thing you can... And all of these sales messages are all around us. And the dunya is inviting. And there are two types of people. There are those... Uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, he said. He said that the dunya is turning away from you. It's walking away from you. 
and the Akhirah is coming towards you. And each one of them has their children. There are the people of this dunya and there are the people of the Akhirah. So be from the people, the children of this dunya, of, of the Akhirah, and do not be from the children of this dunya. This dunya will only disappoint. It's already going away from you. You have a shorter life span remaining from when uh, I'm talking right, right now than when we began. That meal that 400 out of the 500 of you had <laughs> was w one less meal that you will have before you will leave this world. Who knows how many we have left? 5, 10, 20, 500? So then, this dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, comes after, a priority after, fixing what comes before it, which is the fard, correcting our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is this so necessary? Even when we talk about, let's go into hasbi Allah, sufficient for me is Allah, there is no God but Him. On Him I place my trust and reliance. This means you have to have firm belief and reliance and knowledge and in your heart you know that Allah exists without beginning and end. And Allah doesn't need anything and He takes care of everyone's needs. And Allah is not like His creation and is not limited. And Allah is one. And Allah has ultimate knowledge, will and ability. That Allah knows every single possibility that could possibly happen. And Allah has chosen from His wisdom. Allah is the, the one who no, no one escapes His will. He, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants goodness for you. The goodness will be arranged. The barriers that you thought were unbreakable will break. His has ultimate ability. When you say, Hasbi Allah la ilaha illahu, sufficient for me is Allah. Allah is in complete control. This complete yaqeen that is built on learning, knowledge, and implementing and sacrificing. La ilaha illahu alayhi tawakkalt wa huwa rabbul arsh al azim. Why is the great throne being mentioned? And He is the Lord of the great throne. What is the great throne? Is it something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs? A'udhu billah, astaghfirullah. How many Muslims believe that the throne is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs? Astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is entirely needless. What is the great throne here? It is used as a symbol of the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you how small you are and your problems are, how insignificant your problems are, how easily Allah will take care of your problems. Who is the Lord of the Great Throne? The Prophet ﷺ told us that this whole world, this whole universe, compared to the second heaven, and when I say heaven, I don't mean Jannah, I mean the Samawat al Sabah, the seven universes or the seven dimensions or the seven worlds, uh, and then above that is Jannah. This lowest and smallest one that we live in compared to the next one is like a ring in the desert. If somebody dropped a ring in the desert and they went one minute down, would they go back and look for it? Impossible, it's gone. The winds have covered it, everything looks like everything else, it is insignificantly small. And the second to the third is like a ring in the desert. And the third to the fourth is like a ring in the desert. And the fourth to the fifth, and the fifth to the sixth, and the sixth to the seventh. And all of these are like a ring in the desert compared to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, us compared to this universe is probably smaller than our bacteria in our body is compared to us. So then, what about this universe compared to the next, and the next, and the next, and all of that compared to the throne is nothing. So the Lord of the great throne, this is why you're remembering Allah is the Lord of the great throne. What are my problems then? What are my worries? 
What am I worried about if now I have remembered Allah who is the Lord of the great throne as the one who is sufficient for me and will take care of all of my needs? What problem is there that I should worry about? The Prophet وسلم, uh, we were informed that the one who does this seven times in the morning and the evening, Allah will take care of his worries in this world and the next. The one who says, I am pleased with Allah as my Lord, with Islam as my deen, and with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as my prophet and messenger, كان حقا على الله أن يرضيه. Three times, it becomes a right upon Allah. Allah makes it a right upon Himself to please this person in the akhirah. The one who after they make wudu, they say, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. اللهم اجعلني من التوابين واجعلني من المتطهرين. The doors of Jannah are open for him to enter from whichever one he wills. Dhikr makes everything better. Now, do you understand the statement of the Prophet wasallam? the example of the one who does the dhikr of his Lord and the one who does not do dhikr of his Lord is like the example of the living and the dead. There's no comparison. But we are lagging behind Learn your fardain. Get your prayers to be accepted. People are still at a stage where they're not cleaning themselves well in the bathroom. And they're not making their wudu with proper care and attention. And they never learn their proper aqidah. And they still have questions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that grow to doubts, that grow to disbelief. So learn your required knowledge. Practice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to do. Stay away from sacrifice your desires of haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open to you such pleasures of His remembrance. Whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace them with something better. The companions, they would say that if they, they only knew, the disbelievers knew the pleasures that we experience and the contentment and the peace and the beauty we are living they would have fought us over it with swords the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a necessary part of our life so for most of the people most of the Muslims what is it go learn your fardain correct your surah al-fatiha pray make your wudu properly clean yourself properly and perfect your tahara ask your questions about your aqidah your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people who are the 1% of the Muslims who have done this, 90% think they have done it, but only 1% have done it. The 1% who have done it, then go and open up a book of adhkar that is legitimate. There are many books, one of the famous ones, Hasnul Muslim, the fortress of the Muslim. One beautiful thing I like, mashallah, the people of Hisham, they refer to their morning and evening dhikr as tahseen, fortification. Like a fortress, like you build a castle, a tower around yourself, cannons and archers and defenses. You want to say lasers and guns and turrets protecting you. You become an impenetrable fortress. The shaitan will go the other way. You leave your house saying, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, I leave my house. I put my trust and reliance on Allah. There is no power or ability. Allah's ultimate knowledge, will, and ability. There is no power or ability except with Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, You are protected and sufficed and guided. That means your needs will be taken care of. You will be protected and you will be guided. Not only that, the shaitan sees you taking that path. He'll tell the other shayateen, everybody has their qareen that is stuck with them. The poor shaitan that is stuck with you now, you enter your car with the dhikr of Allah, and you're driving at 60 miles per hour, 70, 80 miles per hour, the shaitan cannot enter that car with you, he has to uh, uh, jog behind you. You take a plain miskin, your shaitan, with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other shayateen, they come to try to attack you. That shaytan, no, don't, don't even bother with this one. He is protected and sufficed and guided. Don't even, don't just try the next guy. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is leaving your house with the dhikr of Allah. Entering your house with the dhikr of Allah. 
Do not. People, they have all these problems. The other thing I studied was psychology. And why did I study psychology? I was trying to become a doctor. And then I became an imam when I was 19 years old. And then I saw the problems in the community. And I said, well, I'm the one who's dealing with these people's problems. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has equipped me with some ability to handle and speak to people, then now I'm going to try to learn everything I can to be able to help them better. And the Islamic side is much, 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 much more important than the psychological side. And actually, I might mention that because the dhikr is an important part of it. But so many people have problems in their household and lack of peace and the shaitan is actively working day and night. Because one, they are entering the house without the remembrance of Allah. All sorts of haram is being played in that house. And then when they eat in the house, they do not mention the name of Allah when they eat. The shayateen, they are with you once you are coming inside of your house. Once you are at the doorstep, they're waiting, the shaitan and his gang. You enter into the house without saying the name of Allah. The shaitan says, we have a place for the night. You eat. The shaitan says, well, you have you know, uh, bed, and, bed and breakfast. You have a place to sleep for the night and you have your meals. You mention, you enter your house, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can the shaitan do in the face of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَلَا وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا And we reveal of the Qur'an that which is a cure and a mercy for the believers and it only increases the oppressors, the shayateen of human beings and jinn and the arrogant people and all of them, it only makes them have more loss. You mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once you enter. You say salam to the family once you enter. The Prophet ﷺ would enter, he would say, Bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala rabbina tawakkalna. And then he would say salam loud enough for anyone who is awake to hear and anyone who is sleeping to not be disturbed. Then the shaitan says, you don't have a place to sleep for the night. You eat while you say Bismillah. He says, la mabita lakum wa la asha. You have no dinner, you have no place to sleep tonight. You want your shaitan to be tired and sick and starving. You don't want your shaitan to have all the energy to be attacking you all the time and formulating plans and coming and destroying your relationship with your children and your relationship with your husband and relationship with your wife. You don't want this. Why do we care if the shaitan eats or doesn't eat? He's going to use that energy to destroy us. What does it take? The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Entering the house. Leaving the house, the shaitan avoids you. Entering the house, the shaitan cannot enter with you. You enter your car remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dhikr of entering your car, this is mentioned in the Quran. Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu mukhreen wa inna ila rabbina la muqaliboon. You say, Bismillah. Then when you sit down, uh, Bismillah as you're entering, Alhamdulillah, once you sit down, uh, and there's a longer dua again if you haven't completed your fatiha perfect your fatiha then these adhkar what can the shaitan do to the one who is leaving his house entering his house putting on his clothes with the remembrance of Allah somebody changes their clothes the shayateen are watching the person in, in, in their naked state the person says the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Allah as they're removing their clothes, the shaitan cannot see them. They mention the name of Allah as they're entering into the bathroom, they are protected from the shaitan's seeing them. Bismillah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubith wa al-khabath before entering the bathroom, leaving saying ghufranak. All of these are necessary because there's a real world that we are in, that we are o our eyes only see a very small fraction of what is around us and what is affecting us. But don't worry, the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is the one who is the powerful one and the protected one. A lot of people think, oh, if you want to deal, dealing with that otherworldly, that other side that we cannot see, that's like a sahir, that's like a magician or whatever, a person who's dealing with jinns, that is the person who has power on the other side. No. The one who has that assistance coming from the other side, and from the master and the creator of the other side, 
is the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every aspect. There are so many more adhkar. For me, with my father, rahimahullah, he would give me one. Once I memorized it, and I started practicing it, then he'd tell me the next one. I saw his wisdom once. Somebody came, I was trying to teach them dhikr, and they needed it. And I told them like five of the ones that they needed all at once. How many of them do you think they did? Zero. Subhanallah. But in other cases, it was different. Uh, one a brother came with issues with uh, OCD. And he had these thoughts and he couldn't function outside of his own house. And then we had a le lesson in Aqidah and we had a uh, uh, just a few dhikrs that he needed to do. We talked about Allah. How Allah has complete knowledge and his, nothing escapes His will. That it doesn't matter, you're outside your house, you're inside your house, don't be afraid. Just because you're inside your house, it's not going to protect you. It doesn't matter. Go outside, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If something is going to happen to you, it will happen to you no matter where you are. There's no benefit in living in fear and doing all these things. And he started doing the dhikr. I told him, look, there's a brother who can come and do ruqya on you. And this is from the sunnah. He said, no, no, I want to conquer this with my, uh, 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 my complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Where do you hear of any psychologist who cures somebody of OCD in, in a matter of a, a couple of months? It doesn't happen as far as I know. But the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is very powerful. And I met him later outside of his house and he was invited me out to eat and we, and then I realized who he was. I didn't even remember, subhanAllah, when I saw him. There are other people who, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including myself, who had a problem, whether it's anxiety, depression, worries, stresses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just, uh, for me personally, it was just a feeling, a very tight feeling for months and keeps coming back unavoidable and I did my dhikr but then I did one other dhikr that I didn't think of doing which was plentiful istighfar and not just the any istighfar the master of istighfar the best way to ask Allah for forgiveness and then that feeling went away alhamdulillah and as if it was never there why? what is the benefit of istighfar? Istighfar is such that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ هَمْ مِنْ فَرَجَا وَمِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجَا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Whoever makes it a habit to ask Allah for forgiveness. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's advice himself was a hundred times a day. Whoever insists upon istighfar, whoever makes it a habit to do istighfar, Allah will make for him out of every worry a relief and out of every tight situation a way out and will bless him from where he does not even expect. This is istighfar. And why I would say that the one of the most beneficial adhkar for us today is istighfar, because we are so full of sins. So we say astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh a hundred times in the morning. Say it after your fajr prayer. Take you three minutes. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Oh Allah, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I repent to you. Grant me repentance. What is the number one thing most of us should do repentance from? Not learning our fardain again. I have to keep repeating that. We have to learn. Don't live in a state of doubt. Don't live on an edge. Don't live disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be contented with having anxiety and depression every single day. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find rest. Get, go to somebody who can help you, who can teach you these adhkar. Go to somebody who is trustworthy, knowledgeable, practicing. 
the book Fortress of the Muslim will have the adhkar of the different parts of the day and the different occasions. Go and learn the ones that are pertinent to you. Go download the different apps of Hisn al-Muslim, Fortress of the Muslim. You'll find some of them contain the hadith and they'll tell you the virtue and the benefit. By the way, Sayyid al-Istighfar, the best way to ask for istighfar, you know the virtue of that dhikr? This is the best way to ask Allah for forgiveness. The one who says it in the morning and dies before the evening will enter Jannah if they avoid major sins. And the one who says it in the evening and they die before the morning, they will enter Jannah. Whoever says ayat al-kursi after the prayer, there is nothing between him and Jannah except for death. Whoever says the tasbih, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar 33, and then la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Then they will be at the top rank in reward for that day. Nobody will be able to match them except the one who did the same or more. The one who says them 33, 33, and 34 before they sleep, that will be better for them than having a slave that is helping them with their matters the next day. Allah will arrange your affairs and make your matters easy. Whoever awakens while his concern and his worry is Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathers for him his affairs. He's putting his efforts in one avenue and all his needs are being taken care of. And makes his contentment in his heart and the dunya comes to him while it is humi while it is humiliated. While the one who puts the dunya first, Allah will put his poverty before his eyes and fragment his affairs so he's running after this and this and this and not able to take care of what he wants. And the only thing that will come to him is of the dunya is what was written for him. Put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I could go on forever about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this dhikr of Allah, if you are a person from those 1% who are actually have learned and memorized your fard ayn, the rulings of your prayer, the rulings of your fasting and so on, then alhamdulillah. And if not, uh, 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 then learn those things. And then this dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what brings peace to the hearts. Again, do not be satisfied in a state where you feel the depression of being disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where you feel the darknesses on top of darknesses. And remember Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His remembrance remove us from the darknesses of the light, uh, to the light. And we'll end with the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through which Allah sends upon us ten salawat. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن شاء الله if we have any questions uh, if we have time I don't know where the administrators are yes Sayyid al-Istighfar, you're not going to memorize it by me saying it now, but uh, search it up, Sayyid al-Istighfar, the master of Istighfar. You can find it very easily. O oh Allah, you are my Lord, there is no God but you, you created me and I am your slave. And I am trying my best to do, to fulfill my promise and my covenant with you. I seek your protection from the evil of what I have done. I admit to you all of your blessings upon me and I admit to you my shortcomings so forgive me. No one can forgive me except you. Beautiful Istighfar. Any other questions? I don't see the administrators but inshallah if there's no, yes. About the tasbih at night, yeah, I know the story you're trying to tell me, it's, uh, get me to say, Jazakumullah khair, that it was Fatima radiallahu anha, this is why it's called the tasbih Fatimi, that she came to the Prophet sallallahu after one of the wars and she asked for a person to come sent to, to, to a servant to be sent to her house. And then uh, the Prophet sallallahu wasn't there, so she left the message and she went home. The Prophet sallallahu came and sat down on the mat when she and uh, her husband Ali radiallahu anhu were laying down and he sat down and he said, should I teach you something that is better for you than having that servant? Say before you sleep, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar 33, 33, 34 times. That's the story. Jazakumullah khair. Any other questions? Inshallah we can end now, brother Hafid. Subhanak, yes, sorry. Uh, 
اذكار ما شاء الله May Allah bless him tremendously. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. She said that the Imam is teaching the adhkar one by one. Alhamdulillah. This is a beautiful thing to see. Uh, of course, then, 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 Alhamdulillah, this is a good sign that the people know their fard ayn and they're being taken care of. Alhamdulillah, beautiful to see an Imam that is very knowledgeable and very involved and caring about his community and connected with his community. And mashallah, their recitation is something else that is very, very beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your masjid and bless your Imam and bless uh, your leadership and bless your school and bless the adults and the children and everyone. Alhamdulillah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك